Hello everybody, my name is Sammy Moxham and this is an Armoury 3D tutorial for nav meshes. This is going to be nice and quick. I am in the 2020 January build of Armoury 3D uh, in Blender 2.81a. Before I get into this, I recommend you take a look at the GitHub for Armoury 3D and uh, there is a nav mesh example there. Uh, which is just a dot blend with everything I'm about to show you already in the blend file um, and as a sandbox for you guys to play around in. I'll link that in the description. Um, but I will go through step by step how to create a nav mesh and get it working for a game like Scenario. So today we're going to be creating Pac-Man, um, but I have renamed it for copyright purposes, you know. We can't get into any legal issues here with these tutorials. Um, so this is going to be called Cube Man. So let's rename the Cube Cube Man. Uh, so the first part of the tutorial was quite literally just going to be me creating the scene for the game. Um, so, you know, skip it here if you want to get to just the nav mesh part of it. But I'm going to scale this cube down by 5, 0.5, half them, uh, and move them up on the Z axis by 0.5. And then I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to scale it by 30. And this is going to be our map for Cube Man to run around on and run away from the ghosts. Uh, I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to subdivide it. By a whole heap, more than 10, let's go like 47 seems like a nice number, or 42. Now 42 is not the answer, 47 is the answer, that's good. Uh, let's go to face edit mode, top down, deselect everything, circle select, and uh, let's start by creating a little area to start in, and let's have some paths come out of it. And uh, I'm going to do this nice and quick. We don't want to spend too long on this. So I could make a nice grid just like in Pac-Man. But, you know, who's got the time for that? Who's got time to put effort into making games? You know, it's not like it's an art form or something. Um, that being said, what I'm creating right now is a work of art. Um, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. Um, which is me currently. Um, you guys don't matter. You guys can think whatever you want, but this is art for me. Okay, so that's just a random shape. Uh, if you see anything inappropriate in that, that is totally you as well. You know, nothing negative intended by this. I'm just going to invert by going select invert, and I'm going to delete all those faces. This is our path. Cube man's going to start in the center. We're going to have some ghosts in the corner that are going to chase us around. Now, if you haven't done so already, I recommend saving. I saved it as actually tutorial. Uh, let's name this plane. Now on Pac-Man, you know, the map is very grid-like, which is funny because the character is a circle. Um, and in this one, it's Cube Man and our, our um, what's it called? The thing that we're walking around on is rather curvy. Um, so I'm going to call this not grid. Um, and let's set this nav mesh up first. Um, so we're going to go. Actually, I still want to make my scene. I need things to look pretty before I get into actually um, setting up some objects. So let's make our world nice and bright. Let's go into rendered view. And uh, I'm feeling like some pink today. You know what? I changed my mind. We're going purple. Purple is the way. Um, our main character, let's give him a mesh. Let's give him a, a material. Uh, we're going to go, well, Pac-Man's yellow. This is sort of going to be the anti-Pac-Man, so we're going to go blue. Bright blue, like real dark, full blueness, like that. Um, and our world, we are just going to keep that simple, and we're just going to make that gray. Very exciting color, gray. I love the color of gray. I'm going to change this into a sun. Let's go 10 for the strength. Uh, maybe something a bit more than 10. Let's go 20. Let's just make it a cold white. Something like that. Bluey color. Okay. So in the properties, let's get into this. Um, I'm going to just bring up the timeline and just change it to logic node editor. Create new. And I'm going to call that nav. We're going to come back to that. Uh, in the object properties, we're going to go over to armory traits. And we're going to go bundled. And under class, we're going to go nav agent. Now, these are a whole heap of scripts that come with Armory. Um, you can actually take these and make them into your own, which I've done there with nav agent instant, or add your own. Um, 
bundled in if you work on many projects. Uh, I like to go fast. We're going to go 20 fast. That's fast. And then we're going to add node. Nav. We'll come back to that. Now we're going to go into our physics properties. We're going to add rigid body. And we're going to enable animated and box for the collisions. And then we're going to come over to our not grid object. And again, enable rigid body. Um, disable dynamic. And change the shape to mesh. Then we're going to come over to our object properties. And we're going to add a trait. A bundled trait. And we're going to add nav mesh. And that's going to give us a whole heap of settings. Uh, same from the bottom is the agent's max slope and climb. Um, so if you've got steps in your game, if you have a step above 0.9, but you want it to go up, you want to set that value um, to the amount of steps that the height for the steps that you want the character to be able to walk up. And same for slopes. If you have mountains that you want them to climb, um, but it's like a 60 degree incline, like Oblivion or Skyrim, you know, you've got to set that to 60 degrees. Um, you know, pretty simple stuff. Um, and then this is our agent properties. So our agent's actually one meter tall. Um, and it has a radius of 0.5. But, you know, I haven't put much detail into this world generation. Um, and we know that that is going to be a... I think one unit here is a bit less than one blender unit. Uh, which, if I have an angle that is only one wide he won't be able to walk through um, so I'm just going to set the radius to point 0.2 so that he can get wherever he needs to go uh, and then cell height and cell size this has to do with the nav mesh that it um, generates um, and we're just going to set the cell height to 0.5 so that our character isn't floating through the ground I think that's how that works if we hit generate nav mesh, it'll actually generate a visual of what we got here. So yeah, he can fit through this gap. And that's all we need. Um, but that's actually, you don't actually need this. Delete. Okay. So we uh, think we're all set up in our properties. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the scene settings. And in armory player, change the camera to viewport. Um, and that'll give us control of what we can see pretty quickly. Uh, now, the viewport uses WASD, shift, and left click to move around. So we're just going to keep that in mind as we go into this. I said we'd come back to it. I'm going to go shift A, search on mouse. And this is a mouse node. Uh, we're going to go released and right click. So if you, when you right click, if you can hear that, it's when you release, it's going to go to a position. And then... I mean, this is funny. This is very easy to do. Uh, so when we right click, a little gleam of light is going to come through here and activate go to location. Uh, and it requires an object node, uh, object uh, for it to go to, uh, to apply. Man, I've lost my train of thought very badly. Let's start again. This is free inputs in object and location. We can leave object blank because when you leave it blank, it defaults to the object that the trait is attached to, which in this case is cube man. This is the trait here. And then it needs location, which we'll do right now. We'll take the mouse coordinates, which is where our mouse is. And we'll add a pick location node. And we'll put our coordinates into the screen coordinates and location to location. And our nav mesh is going to be our not grid object, or whatever you named it. Now, with any luck, this is going to work straight away. So, I'm just going to go and open the system console. We're going to hit F5. Now, when we right click, hopefully our cube is going to move. Woohoo! That's simple. That's simple. Unbelievably simple. Uh, sounds like the neighbors have started the motorbike next door. If you guys can hear that, that's what that is. Awesome. Now what we need is some cube ghosts. So we're going to add a cube. I'm just going to scale it down, move it up like we did the last one. Uh, and I'm just going to go G, Shift, Z to move on anything but the Z axis. And I'm just going to move it to a corner. And I'm going to name this ghost cube 
one. And we're going to create a new logic node tree. And we're going to call this ghost nav. Because I like the sound of ghost nav. And under ghost cube, we're going to add a node tree, which is going to be ghost nav. And again, we're going to add the bundled node of nav agent. We're going to set the speed to like 10. Don't want to make this game too hard on myself, you know. I want to have a clear speed advantage. Um, and again, we're going to go to rigid body. Physics, rigid body, and just enable animated and the fact that it's a cube. Let's make it a nice color as well, just for the fun of things. Let's make him red because he is evil. He is an evil ghost. Red ghost. Okay, so now let's come over to our node tree. I'm going to go shift A. Now you have a few options here. You can have an on update node, which will constantly tell it to go to a location. Um, but we don't need to constantly be telling it. Um, so I'm going to do an on timer node. And maybe every 0.2 of a second, um, so five times a second, quick math for you there, um, it'll send a pulse to go to location. Very similar node tree, except for now it's going to be doing it by itself and not on a user input. And instead of finding where the mouse is, all we need to do is get the location off ghost man cube man and chase him down let's give this a test uh oh and now we got to run away from our ghost cube who will follow us to the end of his days too easy eh guys way too easy my color scheme isn't doing much for me. I'm not a fan of this purple anymore. Um, and now we just need to add a whole heap more ghosts. This is officially the end of the tutorial. Um, but you know, we've got to have a little bit of fun. Five ghosts just for fun. Here we go. They're all going to merge into one cube eventually, but there they are, all chasing me around. <laughs> ah, good times. Well, there you go, guys. You can all make Pac-Man yourself now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it all worked out for you. Feel free to leave a comment if you need any help uh, with anything. As you can see, the guys are slightly floating. Um, I'll leave that to you guys to work out how to fix that. Awesome. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.